And who bought you your first saxophone? My uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't have no money without him. Right. And, he uh, had plenty of money. And I, I heard that Dizzy, Dizzy Gillespie used to come to your house? Yeah, I did used to come there. So y'all were buddies? Hmm? Y'all were friends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a big baby grand piano, man. Not too many black people had a baby grand. My uncle was a big doctor. Mm -hmm. So he had a baby grand, even though he didn't really play piano. But he put it in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the difference. He could buy all of that stuff, man. He had that kind of money. He was a doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me, yeah, I had no money to buy nothing like that. <laughs> yes, you had a, you, you, I, cause uh, we was on the road. You used to, we used to go to the pool room and you used to play pool real good. Mm -hmm. I heard you had, you had a pool room in uh, his house. Yeah, there was, the, yeah, my uncle had all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Cause he used to have big uh, meetings over there, big congressional meetings and all that kind of stuff. No. So they're important people, so he would impress them when he got to this, that kind of stuff in there. But he was the doctor, period. Right. <laughs> that was his thing. <laughs> hey, Doc. Hmm? You remember when you was at Brownville Junior High School? Yeah. And I, when I joined the band in 65, and I came there, and uh, you had me on the saxophone, and you told me, I was good, but do I know the chromatic scale? And I, and I had to practice that to prove to you that I was serious. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. You don't remember but that? Okay. You remember you that put, in, your love, in your line of thought. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Kids always remember something that uh, older people, you know, pay attention to. But you used to have all these good bands, you used to record them and uh, kept the tapes. What did you do with those tapes? They may be anywhere. Okay. My wife may have put them in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah, I can't find them. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I started looking, I wouldn't find them. And then uh, you used to have Joe Gallivan and his wife used to come in New York to practice at night in yeah, the band Joe room. Joe Gallivan and those he, he and his wife. I was in seventh grade at Brownsville. Uh, second semester, and this little short Bahamian guidance council wouldn't let me join your band <laughs> at the uh, beginning of the year, and they had me in Mr. I Gay's room. Remember, him. <laughs> remember Mr. Gay? Yeah, he taught, Mr. Gay. Uh, uh, yeah, he taught graphics, yeah. and I'm sitting up in graphics room, and I'm, I want to take music, and uh, I, I was playing piano. And uh, because I went to Brownsville, my father knew about you. He said, "Why should I?" He said, "Why should I pay for you piano lessons when you go into a school with the best music teacher in town?" So he cut I'm out the, music, the piano so. lessons, <laughs> and I went in with you. And uh, so I finally got in the class in second semester because he came out there and complained. My father did, and uh, you accepted me. And, and you asked the lady, well, where was he all the time? So I finally got in the band class, and, and uh, I would come in at night. You, you used to come at night and practice. You used to practice on the weekends. And you would have us, you would stay after school, and you would practice on your flute or your oboe while we practice on our instruments in that hot room with no air conditioning. <laughs> And you only open the windows. You remember all them days? <laughs> yeah, we used to but sweat. I was very used serious to about playing those other instruments. Yeah. Yeah. Even when we came in every day for class, you would be on the piano and you would play a little riff, a little blues riff, and then we'd sit down and have to wait for you to finish playing. Then you take roll and then we could start. Yeah, I don't remember how I cut it. Off or cut it on or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, but I was very interested in the music. Remember, I asked you, I asked you uh, to write out the song yesterday. Yesterday. It's when the Beatles first came out with 
Yesterday, ba 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 da 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 da. But then you, you wrote one of out. my favorite songs. Yeah, but you wrote out the other yesterday. Mm-hmm. And because uh, it was two yesterdays. And uh, then I played with Keith Clark. You wrote out those arrangements for Keith Clark mm-hmm. on alto saxophone. Mm-hmm. And you had, uh, uh, let me see, uh, those famous musicians came in. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, see, all of that is sort of gone with me. <laughs> yeah. He used to come and play for us. And uh, when they would do well, shows, they come and play. They encourage you and let you see a guy who's successful in the music business. That's what that was for. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because these guys, Grady Tate. Grady Tate was a fabulous drummer. I remember him off because I remember he was something else. But they were friends of mine. Jerome Richardson? Yeah, he, uh, we, uh, he was bass, for uh, bass, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jerome Richardson. Yeah. They were friends of mine. Yeah. And we come in and uh, then after, after high school, we got together and we just started touring. Like with Joe, with you and Joe Gallivan started recording. Yeah, just to do a tour, yeah. And uh, we, we would record over at Northwestern High School. And uh, then we go on the road and play all these gigs in different places like London, Spain. Uh, uh, they had me out there. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I could play whatever they had. Right. Then we did Ain't Misbehaving in Harlem Swing. Oh, you did? You did it? Mm-hmm. I remember that Ain't Misbehaving. Right. And uh, Bubbling Brown Sugar. Bubbling Brown Sugar, too. Pearly. Pearly. Pearly was one of my big things that I got. Hey, you used to tell going. me about how you cut the, uh, the, the, the conductor and you got the job because she thought you couldn't conduct and you wound up getting the job. Was that Pearly? Yeah. I don't remember all of that. <laughs> yeah, and you were supposed to do, uh, was it Pillar on the Roof? Fiddle on the roof. Yeah, you turn that down to stay with Pearly. Uh, it was a lot of lot of things. Then coming back to Miami, and then doing all some more recordings. And uh, I just I just remember all us hanging out a whole lot. And we went to uh, I think the last big gig we did was at the Knitting Factory, and uh, a year before. 9-11, we were at the uh, Marriott World Trade Center and we played the Knitting Factory and uh, we played against Robbie Coltrane and all these other guys and uh, Evan Parker and uh, and Joe brought these Hawaiian women and he did a, a Hawaiian subtropic show. <laughs> I don't like Joe. <laughs> Doc, I remember when uh, I used to come to the band room at night and listen to you practice with Joe Gallup band, and then I used to go to the Hampton house and and, stay, and sit by the door and listen to you all play in the nightclub with this, this male singer and uh, Eric Knight and David Newby and all those people. Yeah, that was my group, David Newby drums. Yeah, I used to enjoy listening to you all. You play... The, that band sounded real good. And people used to come, famous people used to come in and sit in with y'all. Like, who some of the people came in with y'all? Well, I'd have to dig that one out. I think, uh, didn't James Brown try to hire you? James Brown, well, all them guys were around there, but I don't remember what they did. Okay. I, don't, I didn't keep that. <laughs> yeah, you had a lot of uh, famous students. The bass player came in from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, we had saxophone players come in. Melton oh, Mustafa yeah. used to come in. Anybody who played, he came in and found out what I was into because mm-hmm. I used to study music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Dizzy Gillespie, I used to study him more. But I really did admired him uh, as a trumpet player. Mm-hmm. 
and whatever I get by daily, I got it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That, that was when you told me about Paul Gonzalez. Good player, man. Paul was a really good player. Mm -hmm. Played a lot of jazz games and stuff. Yeah. Paul Gonzalez. I mean, that, that's the first time I heard that name in years. <laughs> yeah. But he could play, too. He was one of the old guys who could really play. He was the one who told you about studying, that, studying a book, a method book, to practice your scales? I don't remember what books he okay. asked me, he showed me. Okay. But he, he would have to because he knew a lot about it. Yeah. Hmm. Did Charlie Parker tell you any, any book? No, I didn't, I didn't know him that well. Oh, okay. I just met him on the road. Mm-hmm. And knew that, oh man, what a great play. <laughs> yeah. And I knew that part of it. And that was it. Who else at the Hampton? Who else was at the Hampton House? Was it Muhammad Ali or Jackie Wilson or Martin Luther King? It'd have to be Muhammad Ali or something because he's from Miami. Yeah. How about Martin Luther King? Monster King, <laughs> man, I don't remember nothing from him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those were good days, man. I, I was studying everybody. Yeah. John Coltrane is just coming on the scene. Uh-huh. <laughs> man, that cat can play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I know I made that statement because that big guy was something else. Was mm -hmm. Fast, great, slightly. All right. And so I'd, uh, I'd get some cold train records and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, we had a piano at home. Bebop. Bebop. That's your favorite, was that your favorite jazz style, oh, Bebop? Well, that was the, was the favorite jazz style. Everybody who played Bebop was a bad cat. He had control of the instrument. Uh-huh. See, we, the guy just playing or something. No, 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 no. Other guys didn't have that control. But uh -huh. bebop players, man, them guys used to study the horns. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. Because they had them powerful runs and stuff they had to play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you're saying, yeah. See, you always, always tell us that don't let the, the horn control you, you control the horn. Right. And you then better. you have to practice. All right. So you can control the horn. Mm -hmm. Doc, let me get your hand. We gonna, yeah, but my uncle didn't play though, so I didn't get none of it from him. He was a doctor, period. Yeah, and you, <laughs> so you were the originator. Right, in that yeah. household. Yeah. Yeah. And it passed on to your your granddaughter. Yeah, if they she's wanted gonna it. She's going to keep the torch yeah. alive. If they wanted it, that's it. It's yeah. There.